Inclusion Network Mobility e Uni for All Network Interview with Alejandro Moledo, Deputy Director and Head of Policy at the European Disability Forum. Hi, this is Natalia Suarez, Communication Officer at the European Disability Forum. Within the Inclusive Universities for All Network project, university academic and non-academic staff are following training of four workshops to get more insights into how they can make their activities and environment more accessible for students and staff with disabilities. In this module, they will learn how to apply inclusive education and accessibility standards. So with this interview, we would like to explore a little bit more about what standards can bring to universities to become more inclusive. And for this, we have invited Alejandro Moledo, EDF Deputy Director and Head of Policy. Welcome, Alejandro, and thank you for being with us today. So without further ado, in your opinion, Alejandro, uh, how can policy help to make university activities and their environment more inclusive? Well, thank you very much, Natalia, for having me in this interview. Um, well, policy, uh, policy brings coherence uh, in a, in in an organization or institution such as a university. And it can also bring uh, certainty, certainty to the university staff and also to the students. By having a clear uh, policy, people know what to expect and people know what are the roles and how to implement them and by when. So if this policy is developed with everyone in consultation with everyone, uh, it can ensure progress over time, first of all, concerning inclusion, diversity, and it can also help to comply with legislation to uh, ensure that a more diverse uh, student um, is, uh, has the same possibilities as anyone else. And it can also, uh, again, bring uh, certainty and resources to the staff in the, in the universities. And uh, well, which are the elements that the university should include in their own policies? Well, uh, I believe the policy should include the principles, the principles that must be uh, respected, such as non-discrimination, inclusion, a universal design approach to ensure that uh, the university itself is uh, more accessible, and more friendly towards students, the staff, and, and everybody that uh, visits the, 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 the institution. And, and consultation as well could be also another principle. The policy should also include the uh, leadership, uh, leadership role, as well as the responsibilities of each party involved in, in implementing this policy. It's very important to have a clear leadership in the organization, in the university, to take responsibility on implementing uh, this, this policy. Um, the policy should also include objectives and objectives to be to be achieved and within these objectives to really set up the targets and the timeline to 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 achieve these targets and finally which is also very important a policy should also include a monitoring mechanism to evaluate and assess progress and and, and update potential uh, targets or uh, or change uh, actions included in this in this policy uh, an ongoing monitoring of the policy is always uh, beneficial to the implementation of it. So, well, we are talking about the elements of, uh, of policy that uh, should include, but uh, which concrete measures uh, would you advise that universities should take in view of becoming more inclusive? Well, again, I, I believe it's very important to ensure a continuous and um, meaningful involvement of students with disabilities, for example, of the staff, including staff with disabilities, uh, the teachers, the, the administration. Uh, and by having this collective exercise of uh, bringing together all the inputs and all the views from, from everybody into the discussion and into the, the, the policy, uh, 
that can really make make a change. And I would also uh, highlight the uh, the importance of respecting or uh, applying the the. Um, the state of the art accessibility standards as for the built environment as for information and communication technologies as for education materials as for uh, measures to put in place in the classrooms to make them accessible so we don't reinvent the wheel every time we want to make our universities inclusive uh, to students with disabilities i also think that is obviously fundamental that the universities provide reasonable accommodation to students, and here is very important to distinguish accessibility from reasonable accommodation. Accessibility is, uh, as we call it sometimes, an ex ante conditionality. It's a precondition that must be ensured, no matter how many students with disabilities you have, and it's a responsibility that comes before. And when accessibility is not enough for a specific students or specific people with disabilities. Uh, then is when reasonable accommodation comes into play. And, and by this, we mean the, the provision of, for example, assistive technologies or specific arrangements for, for students, such as, for example, more time um, for exams in, case of, uh, in the case of uh, that particular student. And it's very important to provide this reasonable accommodation in consultation um, with the student concerned or the staff concerned. I also think that it's very important to invest in training for the staff in the university and to hire also uh, accessibility professionals who can lead on implementing the objectives of the policy in this regard, in, in accessibility, because accessibility gets really technical when you want to implement it in practice. So it's always good to have experts in-house that can uh, assist you know, in creating uh, web content that is accessible in creating uh, mobile apps that are accessible or digital content and so forth. So it's, it's, it's always advisable to, to invest in accessibility professionals. And finally, I would also uh, uh, suggest the, the appointment of a responsible and knowledgeable unit for students with disabilities so they have a clear uh, contact point uh, that can guide them and support them by you know, uh, um, helping them in uh, by by providing specific um, providing the reasonable accommodation that we were discussing before, or by uh, by discussing with the students specific arrangements for them, or tailored information for students with disability that may, may be of relevance to, to them. So having a clear contact point for students and staff with disabilities in the university is also a, a, a potential uh, very good uh, suggestion that we can make. So we are talking about the, yeah, the, the, the importance of the university to become more inclusive, but uh, is there any consequence uh, when a university is not inclusive? Uh, and I mean, for example, if a university has an accessible venue and, and a student who is in wheelchair user mm. cannot access it? Well, it, it really depends on the, on the country and the legislation in that country. Uh, there may be uh, national redress mechanisms uh, put in place at national level, depending on, the, on, on their laws and how the, the system is set up. But I believe that before reaching that, that point in which the student needs to, to seek for, you know, justice, if we can, if we may, um, it, in, in another, uh, through another way, uh, I believe that the, the university itself should, um, should put in place remedial actions or uh, remedial mechanisms uh, internally in the organization to make sure that before reaching that, that, confrontation or that um, other means of, you know, uh, claiming uh, the student's right, the, the university should be able to discuss with the student and try to look for remedies uh, and, and solutions. So we have covered uh, the university perspective, the policy perspective, but what about the, the students? Can um, these students take any measures? Uh, if you could give three key advices to the high management of the university in terms of becoming more inclusive, which would be these ones? Well, in addition to 
uh, to adopt uh, an inclusion policy, which uh, we've been discussing, and I, I think is, is fundamental, I, I, I would recommend to, to invest in, in, in becoming more accessible. Accessibility is not a, an aspect that you can reach uh, overnight, or it, and it is not a one-off activity that you can decide one day, okay, today we'll make uh, this accessible and then we forget about it. It doesn't work like that. So it's very important to invest uh, to have an ongoing investment in, in becoming more and more accessible, that would be one. Then my second recommendation would be to talk with the students with disabilities, to hear them and, and, and listen to their, uh, their opinions and their experiences, because by, by talking with them, probably uh, solutions may, may come up. And then to em embrace and celebrate diversity. And this is something that universities uh, all over um, in, in Europe and, and worldwide should uh, definitely uh, do to, to, uh, to understand that uh, human diversity and take it as an opportunity that must be celebrated and must be uh, taken into consideration because with diversity, it is proven in the industry and in other sectors that better results and better outcomes uh, are uh, result uh, from, from this. So having a diverse uh, staff, having a diverse group of students, having a diverse uh, group of teachers is, uh, is uh, I would say, even an element of success. So that's something that should be obviously celebrated. Okay, Alejandro, so thank you so much for, for your time, uh, for your all the advices, and yeah, thank you. Thank you. EUNI for All Network. This video was made by the European Disability Forum. EUNI for All Network is a project co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program of the European Union. The European Commission support for the production of this video does not constitute an endorsement of its contents.